thumb over index finger and middle finger. Okay, does that make sense? So we're going to see if you can overlap, and if you can, see if you can hook grip it. So wrap around. She can barely touch, so for her, this bar is too fat. So she should be holding with her thumb on the other side. That's where she wants to work, okay? Something to think about. Come on down. Is there anyone here that did gymnastics? Anyone? No? Yeah, you did gymnastics. So females, female gymnasts, they work on the uneven bars. If you look at those bars, they're a little fatter than the high bar that you see for the men. In the old days, those bars used to be in an oval shape almost. And you would have to grab them like this. But that was limiting their performance. So they took it and they made it round. But they still had to grab it with their thumb over because as soon as the thumb went under, it stopped them from rotating. So they had to grab over. Now what you're starting to see is that they made it thinner and thinner so they can do bigger moves. And they're starting to wrap their thumb around. And the only time you can wrap your thumb around is when your hand is big enough to overlap the index and middle finger. As simple as that. Cool? Does that make sense? Great. Now, at shoulder level, I want to have an active shoulder position. You guys have heard that before, right? I want you to have an active shoulder position. Have you heard that before? Uh -huh. Okay. Do you know what an active shoulder position looks like when you're hanging from the bar? Instead of like this, hold back. Right? That's what it sounds like, right? Go ahead and jump up for me and do that. Oh wait, active would be up. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what feels active to you. That or that? That feels active because I'm activating. Right? Okay. It just feels relaxed. That feels relaxed. So where do we go with the shoulders? What do you guys think? Up or down? Down. Down? Okay. Who says down? Raise your hand. Okay. There we go. Who says up? <laughs> Not very confident there in your knowledge, guys. Let's make some mistakes. So here's the deal. Let me just grab a band and show you something. Remember we talked about simple, complex, simple, right? At the end of the day, when we get into the specificity of stuff, I want to make things as simple as possible. So I'm trying to study the body as a system. So right now, when you activate your shoulder by retracting and depressing the shoulder blades, what you're doing is basically putting a kink in your system. And now you have two pieces. One, two, more variables. That becomes hard to control. When I allow my shoulder to come up, what I'm doing is I'm taking that kink out of the system and making the system long and putting tension on it. Does that make sense? Now, <clears throat> you could argue that the shoulder feels soft. Do you have fairly good shoulder mobility, would you say? I think pretty good. You do. You do. Very good, actually. So do me a favor. Jump back up on the, on, the, on the bar and just hang for me. And let yourself hang. Hang. Good. Does that look unsafe? No, it doesn't look unsafe. Now, check this out. She has her pinky knuckle over the bar. But there's a slight tilt where her armpits are kind of turned out. I ideally want to see them turn forward. That's what I want to see. And now, can you hang low? Can you hang low? There. That's what I want to see. Do you feel how now that's active? Do you feel the difference? Mm -hmm. Good. Come on down. So as soon as my armpit turns out, even if I'm hanging high, it's not active. I need that armpit facing forward. I need the lat to look big and the shoulder blade almost protracting a little bit, just a little bit. Okay, that's giving me external rotation at the humerus, at this little bone right here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, because she is mobile and she can hang, she is hanging and immediately that shoulder is caving in a little bit. So what I would do to avoid that from happening is narrow her grip a little bit. So go ahead and jump up, but narrow your grip. There you go. Now, when you hang, you just let yourself hang. There. Do you guys see how it didn't rotate as much? Can you guys see the difference? Go ahead and come down. Do you guys see the difference? If you don't, it's okay. But if you do, it will be great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does anyone here coach um, teenage girls? Anyone here have teenage girls coming in and training or anything? Have ever seen anyone do CrossFit or pull-ups or anything like that? No? Never seen it. Okay, well, that's a shame. Your daughter, thank goodness. So she's a teenage girl. Does she do any of this stuff? 
Good. Have you seen her? Can she do kipping pull-ups? Okay. Have you looked at how she's holding on to the bar? Is she a skinny tall thing or is she strong? Five five. Okay. Is she kind of lanky or is she a little bit bigger? No. Size three. Size three. Okay. Have you looked at how she's holding on to the bar? Okay. Next time you watch her do kipping pull-ups. Did she learn how to do kipping pull-ups here? Or where did she learn? She just had them. She had some pull-ups from before, so she's maybe strong. Maybe that's not the best case. But if she learned how to do them here, and the first thing she learned how to do was kipping pull-ups, you'll see the girls go very narrow. Okay? The reason they go very narrow is because that's how they protect their shoulder. They don't know why they're doing that, but that's what they're doing. They're protecting the shoulder, and they're getting a better system. Okay? Does that make sense? So for you, one of the things I would recommend to get a little bit more power out of your pull-ups and get more stuff coming is narrow grip, and then as you get stronger, you can go and widen them. Okay. Make sense? Yep. I always do my pull-ups like this. I can't do it like this. Do you know why? No. Because here, you're at peak external rotation, so you feel way more protected at the shoulder, you have more access. When we do this, we give you more degrees of freedom, and that you just don't feel like you have that, that traction. Yeah. It's okay, though. But is that all right too? Sure. In fact, if we, I, I have injured athletes, I will start with a chin hang. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Totally do that. Okay, now what we're going to do is you're going to jump up. You're going to get that grip, and we're just going to kip a little bit. And we're going to I'll just, just follow me, okay? Go ahead and jump up. So she jumps up. She gets her grip. Hands closer together than you had them before. Yeah, just like that. Feet together nice and tight. Basic, just kick your feet front and back. You're going to tap my hand in the front and in the back. Just that. Small feet. Not big movement, okay? Just a little bit. Keep moving, keep moving. Hips are a little bigger. Butt is tight. And then the shoulders, we're going to think very big. Keep moving. So small feet. Can you hang there? Small feet, big hips, huge shoulders. Huge shoulders. That's what I'm looking at. Now, if I were to film her and measure how much the feet were traveling in relationship to the hips and in relationship to the shoulders, my feet cover more distance then my hips, then my shoulders. My shoulders, thoracic spine, are always going to be a limiter. But the reason I say small feet, big hips, huge shoulders is because when I say small feet, it gives me a traction point. I have a fixed point up top, right? It gives me stability. I need to create a more fixed point on the other side, which is open-ended. So the faster and shorter I move the feet, the more stability I will create. Does that make sense? Do you guys see that? So I could say fast feet. The problem with fast feet is that my athletes don't understand that, and it goes crazy. So you just say small feet, big hips, huge shoulders, and then the movement becomes kind of symmetrical. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump up on the bar. I want everyone to try to get their pinky knuckle over. I want everyone to try to do the hook grip. I want you to go a little narrower than you think, and then you're going to start swinging. Thank you so much. Can you jump up and swing for us? Now watch her swing. This is almost locked up, and where she is making the movement is all down here because that's where she's mobile. Do you guys see that? Go ahead and relax. Can you hang there a little bit for me? Yes. Now, if you can't handle this, just move your feet like this, OK? So what we need to do with her is we need to give her more thoracic extension. Right now, she's actually very stiff in the upper back. So once we get her loosened up here, we'll be able to access some more of that swinging action. So come down, relax a little bit. So we need to give her more mobility up top. Okay. Now what I want you to do is you're going to think small, small feet, small hips, big shoulders. Let's see how far you can take it. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to limit your feet. Feet are here. Go for it. Just your hips. So you see how she's trying to pull? I want you to push. Here, hang low, hang low. There, do you feel that? Long. Now swing. A little tricky, huh? Yeah. I'm going to put my hand here on your belly. Keep that tight. Drop it. Now squeeze your butt. Squeeze your butt. There. And now start swinging. That's what I would want to look for. Do you see how that's a little stronger? I'm going to break my fingers because she's so strong, she wants to do the Shakira dance. <laughs> right? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. This looks awkward, feels awkward, but this is where I need her to work. Now, can you let your feet swing a little bigger? 
There you go, that's a little better. Now squeeze your butt, squeeze your belly as you do that, and let your shoulders relax. You're so stiff up top, go for it. That's what I want to look for. That's what I want to look for. That's what I want, now you're actually starting to open up a little bit. Yeah. I don't know if you feel the difference. Yes. Do you feel the difference? Oh, yeah. Do you guys see the difference? Does this make sense? You can come down. So watch each other. What is moving more? My legs, my hips, my shoulders. Usually my shoulders are the stiff guys. Once you look at the shoulders, you realize that everything below is just a little wobbly. So somehow we have to silence that. The only way we can do it is by thinking about the shoulders being the prime movers. Does that make sense? Do we follow that? Good. So let's jump up there and actually let's look and watch each other, see what happens as they're swinging around. Let's go. Hips to the bar. All I'm doing is the following. Kick, hips, touch the bar. You're probably not going to make it up there if you didn't get a chest to bar. But I just want you to try that concept, and this is going to lead in to the drill that we're going to do on the rings. Okay? Let's try it. Let's see what happens. How do those kip and pull-ups go? Did you connect them? No, I haven't tried them yet. Belly button up there. I saw some of you guys were just ripping here with your arms. Others were kind of just letting their hips drive up. The people that were ripping with their arms are mostly strength athletes. They like to just rip through things. I got it. Right? Have you guys seen the Matt Chan video where uh, he's talking about competition and CrossFit and the sport of CrossFit? I thought he was very funny and I, I gave him a high five for it. He's like, when you do a muscle up, you just pull yourself up. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's right. That's right. You just pull yourself up. So I'm seeing some of you guys doing the Matt Chan, just pull yourself up. That's great. But you're only going to pull yourself up so many times. Remember, there was a three to one ratio, skill versus strength. Remember that when I add the kip? So I'm going to only be able to do so many strict or rip yourself up there. If I add the skill into the picture, I'll be able to triple my numbers. And that's just something that we look for. But we need to be able to live in the middle. Does that make sense? Do you guys see that? So in order to facilitate this basic life skill, which is the pelvic thrust, we're going to use some rings. We're going to bring as many rings as we can to maybe belly level, hip level, something like that. So all these rings that are hanging around, bring them together, and we're going to start getting into some drills here. And we're going to use some bands. All right. So the first drill, guys, is very simple. Band on the rings. Hand over the band. I can thread it through my fingers if I want, however you want to do it. Just your body weight alone is going to be enough. We're going to take a seat on the band. And we're going to lie down on the band. Arms are completely relaxed. Body is relaxed. You guys see I'm just lying there in my little hammock. Palms facing away from me. Now watch this. This is what we're going to do. We're going to extend just the hips and close. Hips and close. You see that's just flexion and extension like we were talking about. If I can do this slow motion without doing the Shakira dance, right? Do you guys see the difference? Squeeze my butt. I want to try to do this with some speed. Speed! It's not an arm pull. It's a hip snap. Hip! Do you guys see how I'm doing that? Let's get five slow ones, five fast ones. But here's the deal. When we do it, I want you guys to partner up a little bit because I want you for the first two or three to have someone holding your feet. If no one's holding your feet, most likely you're going to do something weird. Hold the feet, just get the hips going, pelvic thrust, and then release the hands and see what happens. Let's go. Five of each. Five slow, five fast. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Guys, I would say purple band for most of us. So uh, relax a little bit. There. Look at your feet. Can you see your feet? Yeah. There you go. Relax your hips even more. Relax. There you go. See how now you're sinking in? Now, just extend and flex your hips. There you go. Good. Now I'm going to let go. Same thing. There you go. You feel that? Good. Now you're going to do it with a lot of speed. Explode. There you go. Good. Now without me holding. There you go. That's it. Watch out so you don't slip. Yeah. Now look at your toes. Look at your toes. There you go. Yeah, there you go. That's it. 
Bam. <laughs> Love it. So, guys, check this out. As soon as the arms bend, the it, that's right. See how easy that is? If the arms bend after you've done the hip snap, that just means that you're following the movement. But the arms should never pull to get you over. There you go. Look at that. Superstar. Okay. I'm going to borrow these. Why don't I go on the pedestal? Can I borrow this guy? I'll use that one. Yeah, that's fine. So next move. Once you have that little pelvic thrust and you have that bow, what we're going to do is we're going to give ourselves a lot of band tension now. Can I have someone to hold my feet for a second? Yep, thank you. So I'm going to give myself a lot of band tension. What the band tension is going to do is going to allow me to get my hips closer to the rings without me having to pull myself up. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a GHD sit-up. So you're going to hold my feet down. You're literally going to push my feet down. And what I'm going to do, do you guys see how I'm kind of extended in the hip? I'm at the bottom of my GHD right now. I'm going to start pushing up with my toes. Flexing my hips. I'm not using my arms right now. Just my hips. Do you guys see how I went about that? Go ahead and relax a little bit. I am flexing my hips, and that flexion in the hips is getting me over the rings. It's not my arms pulling. The only thing I have to worry about, the only thing, is me finishing in the actual dip. I'm not pulling with my arms. I'm fully supported. My arms are relaxed. They're just following the movement. Okay, do you guys see that? Now you can go ahead and let go of me. Once that has been accomplished with someone holding onto your feet, I want to see if you can do that or mimic that with no one holding onto your feet. It gets tricky. And it can't be slow. It's a little faster. Sit up. Do you guys see that? But I'm not pulling with my arms. I'm actually flexing in the hip. It's my hip taking me over, not my arms. I'm never pulling. Do not pull. Let's try to get five or six of those. Let's see how that feels. First, someone holding your feet, and then no support. So palms here, hold his feet, and now GHD sit up. Don't pull with your arms. Yeah, all the way. Give yourself more band tension. You're a little far away, so more band tension. Guys, put a lot of band tension on this business so you're close, yeah, so you're close to the top of the rings. <laughs> there is no finish of the dip. I never pressed out. I just finished at the bottom of my dip. That looked a little bit. I never pressed out. Yeah, it's OK. Don't be sorry. Sit up, and I finish right there. Guys, when I finish at the bottom of that dip, no wrinkles on the back of the neck, so chin in, OK? Watch out so you don't do the, the handstand that we just saw there. Don't press out. If you press out again, they will have to do 150 burpees, and you're going to be counting. Good, but you won't be doing that. You'll be counting. They'll be counting. Yeah, stay down. It'll be good. Good. <laughs> Give yourself more band tension. A ton of it. There you go. Like that. Tight. Now we go. There we go. Now straight legs. Hips extended. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Don't press out of the dip. Otherwise, you're doing burpees with me. Yeah. Good. You tell her. Nice, Cam. It looks great. Yeah, awesome. So that's our all arm pull. So push the feet down. There, you feel that? Now, don't pull with your arms. It's the hips. Close the hips. Now go. You see how? Yeah, it's the hips. Initiating the movement here. It's, oh, you're so strong. Yeah, it's a sit up. It's a sit up. Just like one of those. Have you done a sit up on that thing? Yeah, I have. Just like that. But that's stable. It's not moving around. Correct. Correct. 
That thing is table, this thing, moving around. I understand. Hands here to start with. Hips extended more. There, and now we go. Hips, 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 hips. Do you feel how that rotates you over? That you don't need to pull with the arms? The arms are just following. Oop, it's okay. <laughs> so you need more band tension just to keep you up a little higher. Yeah, that, it'll be way easier for you that way. So that's an arm pull over there. I want to see more hip flexion. So give yourself more band tension so it's supporting you more. Help yourself out. Keep pulling with your hips. So when you start, the chin should be in. Hips extended. There. Now, start going, 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 going. Keep going. And just let yourself fall through. You see that? The rings move. So just let the rings get placed where they're supposed to be. Hips extended. There. Now go. Don't pull with the arms. I should feel your hips. There you go. Better. Does that make sense? So that's, you're very strong in the arms. Come on down. Let's give you more band. <laughs> okay? Let's help you out a little bit. Give yourself more band tension. Because when you're so low, it actually won't take you where you want to be. There. There you go. Okay. Now, hips up. There. Now, start flexing in the hips. Keep going. You got it. So, the hips. All the way through. Just let the rings turn around. Go for it. Go for it. Let the rings turn. You see that? Let the rings go behind you. It's, it's, that's where you want them to go. Now that's just an arm pull. <laughs> okay, come on out of it. So as soon as you're getting tired, you just pull with the arms. Come out. I want you to put band tension. Come on this side. So you're almost high up there. There. Like that. That much band tension. Now go for it. Sit in this? Yeah. This is, your, this is your size. Yeah, there you go. Now we're talking. Good. Take yeah. a sit. Yeah, jump onto that. Okay. Oh, I don't want to. There, there. Go for it. Jump in. You can do this. The rings are a little high for you. That's what's happening. But it's okay. You got it. Jump in. You got it. Oh, you're so close. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. You can be right there. I'll hold you. I'll hold you. Hold her legs. Yeah, Keep your legs tight. I got you. Can you extend your arms? There. You're about to slip. Okay. Let's get out of it. So the rings are a little high. We need to bring the rings down a little bit for it. Or go on a ring that's a little lower. All right. Because otherwise you can't jump in. But you need that much band tension. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Nice. Love it. Not bad. A little arm pull there. Why are you doing the dip? I don't know why you're oh, doing yeah. anything. <laughs> I don't even have a ring dip. Why would you get rings? Why? Feet down a little bit. There. And now go. Ah, that was great. Good. Loved it. <laughs> All right. Moving on. That's better. Don't finish the dip. They're doing burpees. And you're counting. And you love burpees. No. Okay, so check this out. Now, next drill. Same band tension. Same band tension, okay? But instead of just initiating with the hips, I'm going to do a heel drive. Do you remember the candlestick when I said you have to do a heel drive and then a sit-up? So it's the same thing. I'm going to take a seat. This one is slipping a little bit, huh? It's near-death experience. Um, just in case it's happened before. Maybe this will spin around there a little bit. There we go. Okay, that should be a little better. So, same band tension, but now instead of initiating just with the hips, we're going to add another piece, another variable. And the variable is can you drive your heels to your butt? Can you bend your knees first? Okay? So I'm going to take a seat. 
I'm going to lie down in the same position. I'm going to go heels in, heels in, sit up. Do you guys see how I want to bat that? The same candlestick roll we did on the floor. I'm in extension, knee, hip. If I connect those two together, it's the same thing as having someone pushing on my, on my feet. You guys know when you do GHD sit-ups that you go for the knee lockout and that gets you up there? You know what I'm talking about? When you lock out the knee, it flexes the hip. When there's nothing holding your feet, you have to go in the opposite direction. Press down, get a little hammy in there, and now flex the hip. Does that make sense? Let's do five of those. Same thing, no arm pull. And this can be fast. So it has to be knee, hip. There has to be a sequence. Watch out so you don't do the Camille uh, dip. It's sexy, but it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. All right. Okay, go for it. I like that someone's hugging you in the back. A little love in the front. That's right. Here. Relax. Relax. Slow. Knee, hip. Knee, hip. Yeah, there you go. Don't press out of the dip. Don't be in such a rush. Knee, hip. No, you're not in the wrong. You're, you're in the great position. Don't do the Camille. Have you seen the picture of Camille? <laughs> no, it, it, was, it is pretty sexy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. It's the sexy, like, hey. Look at what I'm doing. You've got the hey. Hey. Hey, I'm here. Bend the knee. Flex the hip. <laughs> You're in such a rush. You need to slow down, my friend. It's okay. It's going to be a fact. It's going to be okay. Yeah, that looks bad. Don't press out of the dip, though. Now, check this out. Does anyone feel like when they go through, they want to fall all the way through? Like you're going to go face plant? Does anyone feel that way? Does anyone feel like they're about to face plant? Okay. Then you're doing it pretty slow. Okay. If you do it with some speed, most of you guys will feel like you're face planting because your thighs are so low. If you bring your thighs up as you rotate around or keep your thighs up, what's going to happen is that's going to stop your rotation. Can I use your band just for a second? I'm just going to jump here on the rings. Take this out. My finish, if my finish looks like this, I'm going to fall through. Do you see where my thighs were? But if my finish is here, I'm way stronger. This is me thighs down. I fall through. Thighs up stops the rotation. You see where I am? Different, right? That's what I'm looking for, a sharp finish in a tuck position. Let's go. One more time. Feet here, there. Bend the knees and then go. There you go, that's better. And now finish all the way through. Go for it. Finish there. You feel that? Mm -hmm. That's where you want to be, that's perfect. Perfect. A little, too, a little too tight, a little less. There, palms facing towards me. There, like that, and now legs straight. Now bend the knees, then the hips. No, that's just arm pull. Slow right there. Now, just knee, just knee, just knee, yeah. Just knee, and then hip. It can't be knee arm, it has to be knee hip. Does that, do you guys see that? Knee hip, knee hip. And you guys should be coaching that if you see it. There, that's better. Now watch out with the thighs, they're too low. Thighs up. How's this feeling, ladies? Okay? Yeah, we're, we got a little logistical issue. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> Knees, hips. There you go, that was pretty good. Hips up a little higher. 
Nice. Better. Good, huh? You look great. Great. But just like you were saying, thighs up a little bit more. If you get the thighs up a little more, you'll feel way more stable at the top. Because right now you're transitioning really well. It's fine. Fluid. That's what I said to them. I got to get that. Remember, this is a deep dip you're finishing in. But because your thighs are up, it's going to feel like a deep push-up. Heels, hips. Yeah. One more time. But now, instead of starting with your arms, feet first, hips second, then arms. Yeah, that's the one. Do you feel the difference? That's my friend. You feel it? That's great. Have you ever done a muscle up? I have one during my level one cert. Bam. It's happening today. More extension for the start. More extension. How big can you get there? Right now you're here, here, boom, the hole, at the bottom, yeah. See, that's great, great coaching. <laughs> okay. Now we have one middle step, and this little middle step is, I may have to go on some taller, well, let's, we'll try it. It's slipping? Let's, let's go on some safe rings. I had this one time that I jumped up on the ring. It was just like, whew. I was like straight flat on my back in front of everyone. It was awesome. Everyone's like, oh, should we laugh or not? Like, laugh it off. It's amazing. Besides the wind knocked out of me, I was fine. So check this out. I'm going to put a little band behind me just for comfort. I'm going to jump up. Now I'm going to start from the top. My arms are locked out. I saw a lot of people that just wanted to finish here, OK? So what we're going to do, we're going to go from this supported position, arms are straight, and all I'm going to do is pull myself into that tuck position that I just finished in. So from here, tuck position. What I'm looking at here is not allowing my center of mass to change position, meaning I can't drop down and fall. Do you guys see where my center of mass is? If it's around my belly button, do you see how far it traveled? Do you see where it is right now? It's by my wrists approximately. I want it to stay right there. I don't want it to drop. So that's what we're going to work on. A dip balance where our center of mass stays in the same place the whole time, level. Cool? Let's go. Yeah. Purple one, not too much tension. If you feel comfortable with no band, go no band. You're making an epic video? <laughs> is it? The main purpose is to be able to... Educational for the... Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, yeah, did you feel how you dropped down there? Did you feel how you were kind of heavy at the bottom? Pull your legs up faster. Oh, okay. Yeah? yeah? The way, on, the way up. on the way down, your legs, yeah. Okay. You have to pull the legs. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Makes sense, right? It's the same thing. The center of mass, the combined center of mass never changes. Center of mass never changes. Same thing. Cool, huh? Awesome. Like a dip balance. Yeah, it looks like a snatch balance, but it's just with a dip. Nice. And remember, no wrinkles on the back of your neck. Yeah, that was a good one. I liked it. So this one is not a hard one to really do. The hardest part is to understand what the hell I'm trying to accomplish. Did you see how that, that was heavy in the legs? Yeah, so the center mass traveled down. 
Think about this, guys. When we're hanging from the rings, let's say the rings are here. These are my hands, my shoulders, my hips, my feet. My center of mass is here. I don't want to see my center of mass come up as I go for the muscle up and then drop down again. I want it to keep going up. So as the transition happens, if I'm coming here, as the transition happens around here, I don't want my center of mass dropping. I want everything to follow me. So if I understand this dip balance, as I do my transition, I will be able to combine upper body and lower body to maintain that position of the center mass and therefore make the muscle up more efficient. Okay? Does that make sense? Do you understand why we're doing this? Did everyone try it once or twice? Did you try it? Everyone try it at least once. Get at least once. And it's a deeper dip than you think. Deeper dip. Guys, and this is not a dip of pressing out. This is how fast can you get into it? Yeah. Have you ever done a snatch balance? This is like a snatch balance. How fast can you get into that overhead squat? How fast can you get into the dip? Go ahead, jump up. That's better. Good. Even faster. That's better. Yep, that's it. You bend the knees. You have to bend the knees. Yep. You have to bend the elbows as well, yeah. Everything has to bend. There you go. Did everyone get it at least once? It's OK. Try it with the band first. The band will help you create a little stability. OK. So now it's when it gets a little tricky, my friends. This is when it gets real. This is the moment of truth. So you grab the band. It goes under your hand. But we're going to go very little band tension. So minimal band tension. Ideal situation is I can sit on this band, it goes under my butt, and I'm almost touching the ground. Do you guys see that? So watch where I have the band. Very little band tension. If I go too hard, I can't sit on the ground. I'm barely touching the ground. Little band tension. That way I make it real. Now, once I get my butt on the ground, I have a point of contact there. The first step is the following. Lift the toes. Just that. If I look at the horizon in front of me, my toes should never break it. I can't get it too high. It needs to stop at the horizon. Do you guys see that? Now, what's the next step? Toes, hips. You follow? If I get a quick hip drive, it will send me up. Toes, hips. Do you guys see how it sends me up? And then once I'm up there in that extension, I go heel drive, sit up. Toes, hip, sit up. Toes, hip. Sit up. That's your muscle up. Does that make sense? One more time. I'm here, relax. Toes, hips, sit up. Finishing that dip balance. Don't finish down here. Let's give that a shot. Let's see what happens. This is as close as you can get to what that muscle up feels like. So we're supposed to do it with a band? Yeah, with a band. Here. There you go. It has to be toes, hips, yeah? And then how do we finish? The dip balance. Toes, hips, dip balance, all the way through. So break it down that way. Toes, hips. Toes, hips, sit up, OK? Give it a couple more shots. Let's see what happens. Not bad. Even more hips, though. You got it? You felt it? You want to show us one? Let's go for it. I love it. It's OK. The pressure's on. You're fine, dude. You're fine. It looked great. It was good. Nice. Now, my question to you is, do you have muscle-ups on the rings? OK, so you lost them? Where? Just lack of practice. OK, lack of practice. OK. Are these rings safe to bring up? They're not sliding? 
Okay. Why don't we bring these rings up and we're going to try to do a little muscle up with you, okay? Why don't we do that? So let's bring these rings up, guys, so they're high enough for you to swing. And then we're going to try to do, take that skill and bring it over here. I just want you guys to see how it connects. When was the last time you did a muscle up? Uh, the open. Mm. Yeah, Perfect. I did them in practice, but yeah. not the Perfect. After all those double unders, I was just like. <laughs> yeah, that, that was miserable. I didn't get any in, in the workout. Pretty good, right? Perfect. So you can tell that 99% of the stuff that we do in skill development is always drilling, right? If you play any kind of sport, you don't play the sport every day. You drill the sport. And then there are certain days that you compete it, right? That's when you put it to the test. So for muscle-ups, a lot of my athletes that can do muscle-ups, I don't let them compete muscle-ups every day. I make sure that they drill skills. So if it's 30 muscles for time, I'd rather have them on the band or just working on the transition like we did from the ground because that will develop better skill. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Do you want to just try to swing on those and see how they feel? Yeah. Notice we didn't talk about any false grip or anything like that. How do they feel, okay? Don't do any muscle up or anything yet, just chill. Cool? <laughs> we get excited. <laughs> What's easier, kipping muscle up with false grip or non false grip? Okay. Did you guys know that a false grip is a deduction in gymnastics? Yeah, you're not allowed to do a false grip. Isn't that weird? Why do we do a false grip? Totally. There are some people that can swing with a false grip. They have really good shoulder mobility. But most of us don't look very pretty swinging with that false grip. Would you guys agree or disagree? Agree. Right? It's hard to swing with the false grip. I get hundreds of emails, literally, that say, when I transition from the top to the bottom, I lose my false grip. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> right? It's hard. So here's the deal. We're going to do a muscle up. The same way we just did there, we don't need a false grip. Pinky knuckle over the rings, that's all I need you to think about, and that hook grip. That's it. Go ahead and jump up for me. We're not going to do a, a muscle up yet. We're just going to swing a little bit. So go ahead and grab the rings. Can you hang long there without touching the ground? Yeah, pretty much. Let's go ahead and just start swinging. No muscle up, no nothing. Just start swinging. Bigger swing. Tap your toes in the front. There you go. Tap your toes. Toes in the front. There you go. You see that? Now. The horizon is right there. That's the horizon. You feel that? Yep. That's the horizon. Your toes can never break the horizon. That was the first rule. Remember that? So here, the lifting of the toes that we did on the ground is literally the tap that I'm giving, me, giving myself as I come out of the swing. Simple as that. There's going to be a barrier right there. That's the horizon. Once you hit that barrier, the hips have to snap. So I want you to go swing. On your third swing, you're going to toe tap, hip drive. No muscle up. Okay. okay, you ready? Bigger grip. Your pinky knuckle is off the ring, over the ring. Do you need chalk or anything like that? Actually, chalk. Got some chalk, some manly chalk. There you go. Okay. Hey, get that over grip. There you go. Over grip. Not a false grip. Over grip. On three. Okay, just toe, hip. One, two. Toe hip. Well, not bad, right? So you see that you're starting to fall through. Yeah. So now it's going to be toe hip, heel drive, sit up. Do not press out of the dip. Just stick the landing. Do that dip balance. All right. So we're going muscle up here, okay? But no dip out of it. Take your time. Yeah. There you go. Stack that little plate up.
So, one, two, big hip. Yeah. Hey, good. Now heels here. There. You feel that? Uh -huh. Good. And now come on down. Nice. Do you guys see us the same drill we just did on the low rings? Did that feel safe and strong? Yeah. Absolutely. Good. So on this one, I spotted from behind the knee and from behind the back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put my hand behind his knee. If he does the right thing, he will receive in that bottom position. And just in case, I will have some uh, grip on him so he doesn't fall through. Okay? But he's doing the whole thing. Dip out? No dip out. Or they will do 150 burpees. We'll be counting. <laughs> okay. Ready? Big swing. So one, two, big swing. Up. Oh. Coaches, what did he do? He didn't get any hip, huh? Toe, hip. Toe, hip. Rest a little bit if you need to. Take your time. Does that make sense? As soon as he heard that I wasn't touching him, he stopped doing the drill. That drill has to be so ingrained in his brain that when he goes up there, he has no other option but that drill. So we're still missing maybe 5,000 reps. It's okay. All right, cool. 10,000. On three, my count. I'll help you with the swing just so you feel like you have some action right. going. So, bigger swing. One, two, toe tap, up. That was better. Good job. You almost stepped out of that thing. Okay, come on down. Now he did it on his own. Did you guys see that? Could you tell? Could you feel that that was on your own? Good. Much more hip drag. Much more hip drag. Good. Can you take a cautious risk and do this on your own right now? Yeah. Okay, good. Have you ever done a non false grip muscle up? Uh, yeah. Good. Fantastic. Then I feel safe. Right. Does it look good, guys? What do you think? Yeah. Okay. You good? Maybe. Ooh. It has to be, yes, I'm yes, freaking perfect. Great. There. Go. Big swing. Big swing. One, two, big toe, hip. There you go. Yeah. I did not touch him there. I just had. There you go. How did that feel? Good. Not bad, right? Yeah. Do you guys see how he's working on the mechanics there and he actually got that drill in? Did you guys see the difference? Have you seen him do muscle ups before? No. Has anyone seen him here do muscle ups before you have? Does that look different or the same? Uh, better. Way better. Way better. <laughs> Does it feel better? Yeah, much more, much less just pull yourself up there. Totally, <laughs> totally. Now, what I want you to do is once you receive in that little tuck position, I want you to drop your legs, kick up. So it's a kipping dip. Have you done that before? Uh -huh. Good. When you do the kipping dip, it can't look like this. Press. It can't be a push press. It has to be a push jerk. Check the difference. You see where I'm finishing? Yeah. There's never a press out. It's a jerk. So right. now, take your time. Three swings. Muscle up. Receive. Stop. Legs drop. Kick. Jerk. Do you guys see that? We're looking for that efficiency right now. Big swing, big swing. There you go. Now drop and jerk. There you go. Look at that. Does that make sense? Yeah. As soon as we start thinking about push pressing, we're going to get this action. <clears throat> Have you seen that? Anytime you see this business, you know you're going to beat that person. <laughs> That's all I can think. Thank you. I'm about to beat you. All right? I'm glad you're doing that. I'm all about winning. No. But does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. You see it? Do you guys feel it? Does it make sense? Is there anyone here that's never done a muscle up? Never? But felt awesome with the drill? Yeah? Can you show us the drill? 
Get it. Here we go. Toes, hips, transition. Oh, not, not bad. Now do that heel drive, okay? So toes, hips, heel drive, transition. Toes, hips, kick your butt. Do you see how he stopped with the toes? Kill the sequence. One more time. Yeah, toes, hips, drive. You got it. Let the butt rest on the ground. There you go. Look at the horizon. Look at the horizon. Toes, hips, drive the heels. You feel how you're stopping there with the, with the toes? Toes up, and then right away you go. As soon as you lift, you have to go. Go. You see how that hip is muted? I have no hip. I have no transition. Makes sense, right? Maybe there's a little pressure here because people are watching. Yeah, it could be. Try it again, one more time. Toes, hip, go. You see how that arm pull, as soon as we pull the arms, it's done. So this is what I would suggest. Without people watching you, practice it a couple times, and then maybe we can sneak up to the rings and do it. Is there anyone that, what was that? Everybody turn around. Yeah, everyone turn around. <laughs> Did you feel comfortable doing the drill? No. no. Okay. Did anyone else feel comfortable doing the drill but has never done a muscle up before? Is there anyone here that has muscle ups and that would like to jump up and just give it a shot? Yeah? Do you want to give it a shot? Do you usually have muscle ups? Yeah. Okay. You sm okay. Do you want to try it with no fall script? Okay. I'll try. Okay. I'll try. It's too high. Okay. We'll jump you up here. Here. Come over. Do you need chalk or anything? Yeah. Grab some chalk. No problem. So we're just going to start the same way. Three swings, and then you go. OK? Stand right here, and I'll, I'll just jump you up. Ready? Uh -huh. Go for it. Okay. Got it? Yeah. OK, thumb around the ring. Thumb around the ring. There you go, like that. We're just going to do three swings, no muscle up, OK? Just three swings. Okay. So start swinging. That's the swing, right? So that would be one, two. We're not going to do anything, but that's where you would go, OK? okay? You want to try it now? Yep, yeah, good. Here we go. On three. One, two, and go. Okay, now let's do the muscle up. Okay. Okay, you ready? Tight legs. Okay. One, look straight ahead. Two, toes, hips, transition. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, right. That's awesome. Good. Good job. Come on down. Do you want to try it on your own? Okay. Come on down, rest a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Did that feel safe? Yeah. Okay. But I wasn't sleeping. I, I got stuck. Yeah. There, so I couldn't. Because you didn't over grip. You need to get that pinky yeah. knuckle over. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to stand there just in case, but it's all you. Whenever you're ready. You got a good grip? Yeah. Okay. Good grip? Get a good grip. There you go. Okay. Got it? Yeah. There. See now the wrist? Yeah. That's where we want to be. Okay. Go for it. On three. One, two, up. You see how she did it? She didn't use her hip. Yeah. One more time. I'll just stand right here, tight, tight legs. You got it. Here, one, there. Two, hip. That's better. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That's why I'm standing here, right? Come on down. Did you guys see? Not bad. Do you guys see where her... Uh, Knees finished, here, down, so she's going to slip through. Knees up, you're never going to slip through. There's a drill I do that helps my athletes get used to falling through just in case. You can do it here on a low ring. It's just a forward roll. Everyone's seen that before? So on a high ring, I won't drop your mic, I promise. 
on a high ring, it looks like this. You guys see that? It's just a forward roll. That helps you just have an exit strategy. So practicing forward roll here, this gives you that exit. If you can't do that, band, put the band on, same thing, and it catches you. Cool? Something to think about for the future. Did everyone understand the drill we did on the low rings? If you understand that, that is easy. That's 99% of the muscle up. That's all it is. If you get that, the muscle up is all day long. And it was clear what was missing. And what's cool is that you all coached each other. You were already doing it without me having to say anything. You knew what was wrong. Cool? Make sense? Any questions? Good. Two minutes, bathroom break if needed, and then we're going to go right into some burpee action. Our favorite. Good job, guys.